The landmark summit between Chinese President Xi Jinping and his Russian counterpart Vladimir Putin has paved the way for the two countries to forge closer economic ties and beginning what the leaders called a new era of partnership. Hosting Xi Jinping was Putin's grandest diplomatic gesture since he launched the war in Ukraine a year ago. Both leaders stressed the importance of dialogue in resolving the ongoing conflict without announcing any concrete plans. Putin praised the Chinese leader for his proposed 12-point peace plan, saying it could serve as a basis for an eventual peace settlement. But only when Kyiv and the West are ready for it. The United States once again dismissing China's attempt at mediation. The White House says China is incapable of being an impartial mediator as it continues to buy Russian oil despite Western sanctions. If China wants to play a constructive role here in this conflict, then they ought to press Russia to pull its troops out of Ukraine and Ukrainian sovereign territory. They should urge, urge President Putin to cease bombing cities, hospitals and schools, to stop the war crimes and the atrocities and end the war today. It could happen right now. Stuart Smith joins us live from Moscow with more. Stuart, the Chinese leader heading out of Russia. There's been no major announcement on ending the conflict in Ukraine. Why is that? Hmm. Yeah, that's right. It's because right now the positions of Ukraine and the United States, as well as NATO, are still so different from the understandings of the causes of the conflict and also the practical realities that Russia and China see. So at the moment, both Ukraine and Russia believe they have the military potential to fully achieve all of their goals, from Ukraine to fully liberate itself from Russian military presence in the east of Ukraine and also Crimea. From the Russian end, it still believes it can, quote, demilitarize and denazify Kiev, even if that means going going all the way to Ukraine's border with Poland. And while both sides believe they can achieve fully what they intend and set out to do, uh, there would only uh, be a change to that, theoretically, if there was a huge amount of political pressure. And Xi Jinping doesn't seem either interested or necessarily capable of doing that with the Russian president. So in terms of what's uh, on offer now, it's clear that the Chinese peace proposals are something that the Kremlin could see as a basis for future talks. But as things stand, Russia is not desperate for a non-military solution, and nor does China seem to feel it's necessary to encourage one, while, as this joint statement suggested, uh, Ukraine and the Western nations are not looking for one either. Here's Dmitry Peskov, the Kremlin press secretary, uh, giving some light on what was discussed on Tuesday and Monday. And as we saw from the joint statements afterwards, China didn't felt, uh, feel it possible to repeat its statement that Ukrainian sovereignty must be respected. Of course, both Russia and China have to sign on to this document. But it did agree with Russia that it clearly felt the United States and NATO had some responsibility for beginning the conflict and also uh, called upon dialogue as the only way forward. But as things stand, the US has uh, not shied away from delivering weapons to Ukraine, saying that it's important for it to maintain its freedom. And Ukraine, too, is uninterested, as things stand, with speaking with the Russian president, Vladimir Putin, which would, of course, get in the way of any top-level negotiations. So the positions just aren't close enough yet, seemingly, for even Xi Jinping, a powerful uh, global politician, to make a difference. Mm. Um, as Russia continues to face growing international isolation, what can we get, take away from the importance and the future of ties between Moscow and Beijing? Yeah, well, Russia-China experts are sharing all of their opinions over the past two days. I'll share some of them with you. First of all, the optics of this visit, how it looks, was the most important outcome, according to many of these people. They're suggesting that the very fact that Xi Jinping is showing he is un un uh, unperturbed from visiting Vladimir Putin at such a sensitive time shows that China is willing uh, to say uh, to 
deliver and to talk with those that Western nations feel he should not be. So showing that third party influence, as we've often heard from Chinese and Russian politicians, is not going to get in the way of their bilateral relationship. Indeed, the rhetoric from these talks seem to suggest that it's indeed still at the highest point in history and getting stronger. But one analyst noted that there was no mention of uh, this previous term of a no limits partnership that was not repeated despite coming into Russia Chinese parlance last year when a statement was signed. And so it seems there may in fact be limits. Two suggestions as to why uh, some evidence for that. One is that the power of Siberia to pipeline, one of Vladimir Putin's most important projects for getting gas to China is still not officially signed off. He made it sound like it was close to being agreed, but it still is not yet. And the other thing is military support for Russia. There's been no public announcement, no change in Chinese policy on that. China seems completely unwilling to get involved with the possibility of seeming, uh, seeming to be supporting Russia or potentially get on the wrong end of US sanctions. Mm, very interesting, Stuart. Uh, thank you so much uh, for that update. Stuart Smith, live from Moscow.